But we begin tonight with just 19 days to go before the election, with voting already underway in multiple states. And after weeks of Donald Trump and his MAGA minions screaming that Vice President Kamala Harris can't handle tough interviews and is hiding from the press, the VP walked into their house and proved them wrong, handling a very contentious interview with Fox's 1950s send-up supposed straight news guy, Brett Baer. And in addition to proving that she can take tough, sometimes belligerent questions, Harris did a service for those of us on Earth One, exposing how the right-wing media machine works to protect Donald Trump at all costs, to maintain the fiction that he is normal and stable and not senile or dangerous, that he's still the character from The Apprentice and not the sundowning 78-year-old wannabe dictator that those of us on Earth One see every day. The hosts on Fox, especially in primetime, don't expose their viewers to the unhinged, diminished, real Donald Trump. Instead, their viewers see a completely different, carefully edited, sane-washed, Earth 2 Trump. But last night, Kamala Harris pierced through the veil to give Fox viewers a glimpse of reality. Check out this moment when Harris exposed Fox's cynical editing tactics as she brought up Trump's recent comments about sicking the military on, quote, the enemy within. He is the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. We asked that the, question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We no, but think of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So, Brett, I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people, that's not what you just showed. Busted. For the record, the vice president is correct. Here is the full bite from that Trump interview. It is the enemy from within, and they're very dangerous. They're Marxists and communists and fascists, and they're sick. I use a guy like Adam Schiff because they made up the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It took two years to solve the problem. Absolutely nothing was done wrong, et cetera, et cetera. They're dangerous for our country. We have China, we have Russia, we have all these countries. If you have a smart president, they could all be handled. The more difficult are, the, you know, the Pelosi's, the, these people, they're so sick and they're so evil. If they would spend their time trying to make America great again, we would have, it would be so easy to make this country great. But when I heard about that, they, they were saying I was like threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. You see what they did there? Cut out that last most important bit. Now, there was another moment during the interview where Bear literally just played one of Trump's campaign ads and asked Harris to respond to it. Imagine getting an opportunity to interview a presidential candidate three weeks from an election, and you use that valuable time to play their opponent's commercial for them for free? And you need to understand that this is what is happening all the time on Fox, especially for prime time. Their viewers are being fed a false reality. In fact, it's probably the first time a lot of Fox viewers heard that former members of Trump's administration, including General Mark Milley, have called him dangerous, unstable, and unfit. Or the scores of economists who say Harris's plan would improve the economy while Trump's will cause inflation and a recession. She even said point blank, my presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's, which is one of Trump's favorite talking points. But that's probably one of the reasons that Harris did the interview, to show independents and Nikki Haley voters that she's not the weak and dumb caricature Donald Trump has created of her. She's strong and capable and not afraid of right-wing media. Last night was also a light bulb moment that brought me back to this moment from three days ago, when we all watched Trump awkwardly swaying to songs like Nothing Compares to You and Hallelujah for nearly 40 minutes at a Pennsylvania town hall. But what was happening before this senior moment? 
is that he actually took five questions from an audience, from an audience members. And even in a room full of supporters, it wasn't going too well. He gave long, rambly answers, talked about Hannibal Lecter when asked about inflation, and even told everyone to go vote on January 5th, as per usual. So, you know, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility that he took a handful of questions, realized he couldn't handle it, and just decided to bail and instead just burn 40 minutes zoning out and playing some of his favorite tunes. And it seems like he and his team are somewhat aware that he's struggling. I mean, it would probably explain, right, why he's backed out of numerous interviews this month alone, for 60 Minutes, then CNBC's Squawk Box, and just today, the NRA canceled an event where he was set to be the keynote speaker due to, quote, campaign scheduling changes. And CNN's Brian Stelter is reporting that he also backed out of another interview that was in the works with NBC News on the economy. Because unlike Vice President Harris last night, He's incapable of taking hard questions. Most days, he can't even give a coherent answer to softballs, even at a friendly town hall. In fact, Donald Trump seems to believe that he is under no obligation to face any questions, even if they come on friendly territory. Like his appearance at the Economic Club of Chicago, where he imploded after being asked about one of his pet issues, tariffs. And today, he retreated to one of his safe spaces, an interview with a Manosphere podcast host. Trump claimed that he was hoodwinked into an interview with Bloomberg's editor-in-chief and wasn't happy about it because he said he thought he was just supposed to show up and give a speech. The reality is, this increasingly decompensating candidate will only go where he's coddled by the crowd, like his town hall with Fox, aired yesterday with the benefit of being taped a day earlier with an all-woman audience that was stacked with pro-Trump Republicans, something that was pretty evident from the start. And when he was asked to respond to his own remarks, calling Democrats the enemy within. The Republican nominee for this year's presidential election, Donald J. Trump. Welcome. Mr. President, Kamala Harris has said you sounded unhinged and unchecked power is in our future. What, what, what do you I say know, I about that? I thought it was a nice presentation. I, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't unhinged. Hmm. But even faced with friendly fire, he once again simply weaved in the face of questions, especially on the economy. But what kind of realistic change is that? Do you think you can provide single parents, married parents, any kind of parent to just simply afford children in today's world with the and way it's things not fair, are? Right? It's, it is not fair. No. You never heard of Ivanka, right? So what happens to the economy such that people can afford bacon that's gone up 28 percent in cost? Like, what do we do? So I feel so badly about what's happened because this, none of this would have happened. Just to start, there wouldn't have been a war in Ukraine and Russia. There wouldn't have been an October 7th in Israel. That's his response to the cost of bacon. OK, but perhaps the greatest contrast with his opponent, Vice President Harris, came in how he ended the day with a second televised town hall with Univision, where unlike his Fox love fest, he did take tough questions from Hispanic voters. But unlike Vice President Harris on Fox, he couldn't hold his own, highlighted by his response to a question about January 6th from a former Republican construction worker from Tampa, Florida. I want to give you the opportunity to try to uh, win back um, my vote. You know, what uh, happened during January 6th um, and the fact that, you know, you waited so long to take action while your supporters were attacking the Capitol. If you would answer these questions for me, I would really appreciate it and give you the opportunity. There's, you know, your own vice president doesn't want to support you now. Thank you, Ramiro. So uh, the people that don't support a very small portion, very importantly, you had uh, hundreds of thousands of people come to Washington. They didn't come because of me. They came because of the election. They thought the election was a rigged election. Nothing done wrong at all. Nothing done wrong. And uh, action was taken, strong action. Ashley Babbitt was killed. Nobody was killed. Uh, there were no guns down there. We didn't have guns. The others had guns, but we didn't have guns. So that was a day of love from the standpoint of the millions. It's like hundreds of thousands. 
Joining me now is Denver Riggleman, former Republican congressman who's no longer affiliated with the party in Denver. I don't know if you could see the, the way that, the, that people were reacting as Donald Trump said it was a day of love. And people were going, what are you talking about? And he said no one was killed. And people were like, what are you talking about? It, it, it's, it seems to me that what we're seeing is Trump confronting reality and not being used to it and not being able to handle it. What do you think? I think his whole life has been doing the weave, you know, <laughs> trying to get away from it, <laughs> from getting away from reality. I think uh, I'm sorry, Joy. I mean, that's what me and you do here. But hey, I listen. think the, I think either he's I think he's either deliberately lying and radicalizing people the same that he did you know, before the election in 2020, or he's too stupid to know the difference between fact and fiction. I think both of those are equally dangerous to the American public. And I've said this before, you know, I've had individuals come up to me and say, well, Dem Reno, he just says a lot of stupid things, but he doesn't follow through with them. And I've heard that a lot, Joy, and I'm like, well, that's sort of ridiculous. I think he followed through with exactly yeah. what he told Billy Bush on that Access Hollywood bus if you talk to Eugene Carroll. If yeah. you actually, if you talk about what he said about the election being stolen and how many times he mentioned violence or things of that nature before January 6th, it seemed like those individuals did exactly what he told them to do. So I think it's a little bit ludicrous to think that he does not believe what he says, which means that he is incredibly ignorant, or that he's radicalizing individuals to do the same kind of ridiculousness that we saw on January 6th and the stuff that we're seeing lately with the type of violence around the country that we have today.